today. Critics slam Joe Biden after uh, he appears to forget the name of his defense secretary. And also uh, in Biden news, the education department decides that racially segregated groups, not discriminatory at all. Don't worry, nothing to see here. We've got a lot coming up today and it starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by my friends, Yaku Buyans, host of the Yaku Buyans Show. Thank you for yep. being here. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Yes. And uh, Amy Robbins. Hello. Hello, Always CEO good of to be here. Alexo Athletica. Yeah. Uh, so glad you're here as well, and also congrats. Oh, thank you, thank you. I feel like I am always pregnant when I come on your show. At least I feel like that for the last two years. So. Well, I mean, you maybe you could find out what's causing that. <laughs> it's I don't quarantine. Know. We gotta get out of there, there we gotta get out of quarantine. Something you're doing that's causing that. I think there's been a big congrats. spike I in did, babies. I <laughs> thank you, yeah, I'm thank very you, happy for you, thank you. Uh, all right, so we have uh, we've got a lot of Biden news today to get into. So I, personally, I like to start with uh, the news in which we discuss how Biden is probably not all there uh, these days. Now, I know this comes as a shock to no one who has either sat at this table or been watching this program. We've been talking about this. We've been showing the evidence of the mental decline in Joe Biden for uh, a while now. Magically, here he is as president. So uh, let's discuss his video yesterday afternoon where President Biden appeared to forget the name of his defense secretary and also, oh, you know, that that building over there, the, um, uh, um, oh, the Pentagon. Watch. I just want to thank you both. And I want to thank the, the, the uh, former general, I keep calling him general, but my, my, uh, the guy who runs that outfit over there. The guy. Uh, I want to make sure we thank the secretary for all he's done to try to implement what we've just talked about and for recommending these two women for promotion. Thank you all. May God bless you all and may God protect our troops. Uh, whew, kind of a uh, awkward moment there for Joe Biden, you know, and again, I want to make this very clear. We may poke fun at Joe Biden. I do, I mean, it is a sad thing uh, that we're seeing happen. However, this is the leader of our country. And uh, I feel like we should be able to hold him to the standard of, hey, he should be able to, oh, I don't know, get sentences out. Remember the names of his, you know, defense secretary. Know what the Pentagon is. Or read a teleprompter. Right. I mean, are they <laughs> right. not, uh, at this point, right. surely he's not going off script. I mean, you would think that he's not doing anything without a teleprompter, and yet we still continue to have this. And I think the sad thing is yesterday, you know, you have this nomination of these two females of, for, for generals, these mm -hmm. high positions, and that unfortunately was overshadowed by this bluff, yeah. th this lapse in, in, in mental judgment. And like you said, it is sad. I've been saying since day one, since he was... Um, debating since he was out there campaigning this is elderly abuse yes. and this is not shocking or surprising to any of us but um, I think that the biggest thing and the biggest takeaway is we had calls for you know, to evoke the 25th amendment with Trump all right after the the protests at the Capitol he, right he would breathe wrong and yes be like <gasps> he's not mentally fit he's yeah. not mentally stable and yet there is zero call for that when it comes to Biden. It's almost like they're not even watching these. Pre well, no, they're not. They're cutting them off <laughs> when he says that he'll give them exactly. press conferences. I mean, it, it's just really sad to watch. It's embarrassing, too, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, I, I, I look at it and this is not new. Right. This is why he didn't campaign, because they understood. This is why he's been kept out of the crossfire, why he was in a bunker. This is why they cut a feed, a White House feed. I've never seen that in my never. life. We're going to go to questions, and he's saying we're going to go to questions, and they cut the feed. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do, Nancy? I, I don't know if it was Nancy Pelosi or somebody. But it was, yeah. You know, and all of a sudden, they cut the feed. This is not new. For me, is I want to read into the, con you know, the, the subcontext here of, of, of who's pulling strings. Because as we're watching that, sure, that is dismal. It is abuse. We've said that forever. Jill Biden 
man, I, mean, I don't know. It's a whole nother level when your husband's struggling like that and you keep pushing him out there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's some sort of desperation to want to have power, mm -hmm. right? Because the man does need help. Any other human being. Today at Whataburger, if I walk in and I order something mm -hmm. and the person that's serving me has, has mental lapse like that, I would ask, are you okay? Mm -hmm. This is not a, an attack on Joe Biden because he's not a conservative. This is just any human being with that cognitive behavior, you'd go, there's a reason for concern. Mm -hmm. Okay, that being said, he's out there for a reason because it's smoke and mirrors. And who's pulling the strings in the back? When you start hearing Kamala is calling heads of state, you know, when you start seeing some crazy decisions made, that's my bigger concern. And I actually, I said this the other day, and I think the guys disagreed with me. I don't really even know how much he really knows what's really going on behind the scenes. How truly I believe he's being, he's being used. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, just a, a, a little bit of insight into how, of course, the, you know, the mainstream media, uh, social media, how they, of course, they can't help but twist everything to be about Trump because, you know, the man that's not in office anymore is a big threat to them. So they always have to, everything comes back to Trump with them. So this was, uh, of course, on Twitter. Uh, it said, poli it was in the trending politics spot. President Biden appeared to forget the name of his Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, sparking discussion about the time former President Donald Trump referred to, the, to Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, as Tim Apple. It's like, no. No, no one was talking about that except yeah. you guys because you want to turn it around on Trump uh, when we have an established pattern of these mm -hmm. videos from Joe Biden. We have the White House press secretary constantly deflecting when she is asked, when is the president going to hold a press conference? When is the president going to take he's questions? Uh, they've he said can't. that he's going to. Uh, we have yet to see that. So once it happens, we would love to report it here on the News and Why It Matters. But uh, so far, all we have received are deflections and yes yeah no he'll do it oh no yeah he'll do it Thursday or something that that he'll totally do it he's definitely going to answer questions from you guys um, so it is interesting to see the deflection from uh, the mainstream media from all of these big tech outlets who of course helped the president get elected mm -hmm. uh, now they want to turn it to Trump. So what's the play there we're going to deflect for how long and then America's just going to get tired and say you know what we don't need to hear from him it's okay no, we're not. Yeah. Sure. Well, no, I mean, no, most th of the those days are gone. Yeah. And it really, it came from Barack Obama because Obama, very, very well spoken, very polished, out there. And, and politics has become a popularity contest. These are the biggest celebrities of our time, even more than athletes. So the days where you can go be president and your, your country doesn't hear from you, those days are gone. And sure, President Trump said, hey, the White House is going to communicate directly with the people. So now the people want to hear. They want to hear from the guy. And hear, you say you're better than the guy that was there before. Tell us why. We can't, out of reach, can't mm -hmm. talk to me. Well, he won't answer questions, you know. So, but I don't see that it's going to happen. If you have hope that that's coming, a press conference, how? Maybe with a curated set of questions? You know, with a curated set of you yeah. know, uh, audience. Well, they've been asking maybe. for questions prior to yeah, the press been, conference yes. for a while. But so. even in that, they cut the feed. Because he kicks in. Mm -hmm. he's, he's normal human nature. I want to answer some questions. I'm having fun over here. And they go, well, no, you're not. <laughs> well, that's, and, 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 that's, yeah, and that's why you have to wonder how much of, uh, you know, Biden, you mentioned, well, why can't he just read the teleprompter? So how much of this is Biden saying, I'm fine. Come on. Leave me alone. I'm fine. I got this. I can handle this. All of these critics Probably. who have been talking yeah. about me don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to show them. And you know spoiler staffers, alert, he does not end up showing them. No, because you know staffers are definitely, come on, they're definitely they talking I mean, about right. a teleprompter. Come on, they have, have to be. To be. Yeah. Talking about a teleprompter, talking about, you know, they have to be. So, mm -hmm. so maybe it is him saying, I'm not doing it. I can handle it. And they go, okay, we'll just cut the feed. <laughs> I've never seen that happen. I was insane. Before. I was watching and saying, what? Right. Did we have a power out? <laughs> <laughs> Could you, what I mean, something like well, that. Well, I'm just thinking, like, if that happened during Trump's administration, how many people mm -hmm. would have gotten fired? Right. Like, you know, like, that's not excellent. The, the, the White House is supposed to operate with excellence and to remember? a much higher standard. Yeah. And for the, for the feed to just go out all of a sudden, well, I mean, I can cut. imagine if that happened say, with Trump's you. administration. Boop, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, all right. So more news with the Biden administration. Of course, uh, yesterday 
on International Women's Day, uh, the Biden administration expressed openness uh, to the idea of adding a third gender option for federal identification documents. This is, of course, pushed by the American Civil Liberties Union. Ah, the ACLU. Remember all the way back when, when the ACLU was actually concerned with true civil liberties? Uh, yeah, I know it was a long time ago. But uh, they want to make sure that they don't discriminate against non-binary people because with all of the things that are going on in the country, this is the most important. Make sure that non-binary people feel included. So here is uh, the Biden administration. This is the executive director of the newly launched Gender Policy Council, because you definitely need one of those, uh, talking about their openness for adding a third gender option on federal IDs. Watch. Uh, the president and the vice president campaigned during the election on giving a third gender option on federal government IDs to individuals who want them. Does the president see value in signing an executive order to make that happen? I haven't looked yet to see whether that requires an executive order. I mean, I would note that we are um, very inclusive in our definition of gender, um, and we uh, intend to address all sorts of discrimination and, you know, fight for equal white rights for um, people, whether that's LGBTQ plus people, women, girls, uh, yeah. men. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's certainly um, something that we will look at, but I, I honestly don't know whether that requires an executive order. It sounds like we'll have to just look into it a little bit more and see what's required, but it's a good question. Oh my gosh, it's a great question. Are you kidding? Who doesn't want to know whether or not you can get a third gender option for, for federal IDs? Thank God we have this Gender Policy Council now to do all of this heavy lifting on these really, really important burdens for the country. Yeah, this, this is definitely not what we should be spending our time on. And again, I'm just going to go back. Look, I'm an immigrant, right? And I'm telling you, I came here because this country, by law and by constitutional right, is free. So many of these things they say they fight for, um, you've had it before your grandfather was born. right? Mm -hmm. So you're, what you're actually doing is you want to retool it. Mm -hmm. You want to redefine it. You don't want freedom. Define freedom. Because the freedom that you want people to have, I'm not interested in. The freedom when you tell me what to eat, walk, sleep, and all of a sudden tell my three and five-year-old that, hey, can we introduce seven new genders to you? Because mm. that's the same council mm -hmm. that's also fighting with Dr. <laughs> Levin, who's trans, in Health and Human Services, who's now promoting, what, puberty blockers. The three-year-old, same council, right? So to hogwash, absolute nonsense. It's an indoctrination of a society, 100%. Mm -hmm. sure. And we've reached these levels of insanity at this point that there's just no reeling it back. There, there's no way to really come back from what we're doing. And we're seeing the insanity happen over and over again as we sit here and we hear about talking about, well, women's rights. I mean, that, that's a big one. It's at the big forefront of everybody's mind. But then how do you reconcile that, okay, with trans rights also, but then also letting... It, look at what's happening with sports and female right. sports. I know we've talked about this multiple Absolutely. times, but then where is where is the equality where where as as a young girl you know i'm gonna have a daughter here in august and i'm like if i want to teach her about you know competing in her sports and competing and, and all these great things that come from sports but then she really never has the opportunity to 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 win or to compete at equal levels because they're letting biological males into these sports i mean where where's where is it's the not, equality it's it, not there's not and because it's not about equality that's not. what i'm telling you it's not about freedom it's not about equality it's about an agenda mm -hmm. it's about pushing a certain agenda and if you really with intellectual honesty look at that agenda it destroys why is it that pick rob smith for crying out a conservative gay man who served in married to a man you call rob smith and you ask him hey rob do you condone of anything he say listen don't bring that cue to me lbgt is not even what he's saying. LBG, he stops there. Mm -hmm. He yeah. said, you bring all these other, now it's LBGTQ plus, hyphen, exclamation, mm -hmm. whatever. Those are danger zones, and, and the gay community says so. Yeah. They right. say, mm -hmm. we don't endorse this. Yes. Yeah. This is insane. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This is nuts. But, but, but you got to swing the pendulum so far as what they're doing to push society so hard. And it's that whole thing of, I'm going to... I really only want 10 bucks from you. We're gonna ask for 20, and if you back and give me 15, I won. Mm -hmm. Right? This is it. You gotta push it into breaking point. Which is how do you come back from some of this stuff? Some of it you don't mm -hmm. come back from. Yeah. You yeah. don't. Yep. Uh, that 
<laughs> made me think of, you know, yesterday, again, Women's Day, I brought up the point on my social media that biological men do not just have the inherent right to be called women. I find the title of woman to be, you know, very unique and uh, somewhat special and reserved for, oh, I don't know, people with vaginas. And um, I was told that that was transphobic. And I just would like to make sure that the record reflects that believing in science does not mean you are transphobic. It just m means that you believe in science. Okay, uh, we've got more to come, including the White House press secretary uh, telling us that now, magically, putting kids in cages is the humane and moral thing to do. You will not <laughs> believe it. If you have a high blood pressure, make sure you've taken your meds before you oh, listen to this one. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar. Um, Amy, have I let you try Built Bar yet? Nope, we talked about it last time. Oh my time. gosh, I need okay. one. You have to come to my dressing room okay. after the show and I'll get, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a drug dealer. She's except got boxes of them. I need some. It's Built Bars and I'm just t handing them out to people because I know that they'll get addicted to them once I let them taste it. They're okay, they're delicious. I know Yaku has had I it. I love them. He loves them. Uh, if you are looking for something to snack on, especially if you enjoy your sweets, okay? I'm talking to you chocolate lovers. You enjoy a good chocolate candy bar, but you don't enjoy what it does to your waistline. You got to check out Built Bar. They are low calorie, low sugar, high protein, um, and they are there for you in your pantry when you are looking for something to satisfy that craving, all right? It's going to taste way better than the protein bar that you're eating right now that probably tastes like cardboard. They've got a ton of different flavors. They have caramel brownie, mint brownie, peanut butter, cookies and cream. They have it all. And again, they're all covered in 100% chocolate. And it is real chocolate. And it is delicious. Let me just tell you, we have heard from so many of you who are enjoying your Built Bars as well. If you have not yet checked them out, make sure you go to BuiltBar.com. Use promo code NEWS20. You will get 20% off of your next order. All you have to do is go to B-U-I-L-T Bar.com. Promo code NEWS20. Back in a minute. As we have seen in the past uh, several months now, the border crisis continues to worsen. Now we have seen the administration deflect and explain why these are dip Look, these are not kids in cages like President Trump, okay? These are kids in containers. It's much, much different. Oh, wait, um, what are they? They were talking about changing the name of these migrant detention facilities to um, like welcome centers. That's not really what it was, but it, it was reception centers. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Uh, they told me in my ear, reception centers. They're not, no, they're not kids in cages. These are just reception centers that we shuffle them into and close the door so they can have their hands on the bars. But now, now it is totally humane and moral, according to the White House press secretary, watch. Order said that they discuss capacity needs for unaccompanied children. Will they be making recommendations of the president? Is there a, a need for more capacity? Well, well, we know just purely by the numbers, Steve, that there is going to be a need, right? Because we have um, a large number of kids, uh, unaccompanied mm, children, who are coming across the border. We've made a policy decision as an administration that uh, the humane and moral approach is to keep mm -hmm. these kids safe and mm -hmm. get them into facilities that are safe. You know, it's a little odd because I seem to recall the Trump administration faced with the same issue and I was told by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez that it was concentration camps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, concentration camps. Huh. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's a couple of things that I was so glad. I was just on, 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 a, on Rudy Giuliani's show this morning. We had discussed this and I was so glad she just said something. There's so many kids coming. Yes, I wonder why that is. Okay, yeah. A month ago, we said our intel, our surveillance tells us that 42% of the caravans that are coming are minors, children, mm -hmm. unaccompanied, all right? Where do, okay, so we're gonna put them in facilities, a receiving center, so this is shipping and receiving, are they goods? Reception centers, oh. yeah. A reception yeah. center, are yeah. they goods? Now these are human beings, so maybe get your language right next time you wanna talk about a child and say humane, receiving a reception center. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a, a box of coffee, okay? <laughs> this is a human being. Number one, it's called prima fascia, that child is exploited on his way to the border. It's child abuse in the other country. Mm -hmm. To march a child 400 miles, mm -hmm. malnourished, dehydrated, okay, most of them sexually abused, rape kits in the backpack, coyotes, not the animal, thank you very much, Joe, <laughs> but you know, the bad guys, 
bringing him over way to write a passage, right? Okay, so now you put him in a center. Yes, built by Barack Obama, rightfully so. Separate them. All of a sudden, overflow. Mm -hmm. Can't handle him. Let's start talking about um, human feces. Let's start talking about sanitary. Let's start having those conversations. Thank you, because I'm mm -hmm. talking to CBP. Right. Yeah. And okay, so how long you hold the child? Let's say they hold them for three, four days. Where does that child go now? Where? CPS? They're going to go into foster care system. That's as broken as can be. Let's have that conversation. Mm -hmm. You know where they go? Straight into the hands of the traffickers in the United States because now there's an undocumented child unaccompanied that nobody will look for. One might say, Amy, if uh, the administration wanted to do the humane moral thing, they would focus their energy on making sure that these countries uh, on our southern border knew that we cannot accept you. We cannot accept you. Instead, Absolutely. they're right. trying to broadcast to all of these countries, hey, it's, I mean, we may need to hold you for a little bit, but mm -hmm. hey, once we hold you, once you get on in, we're just going to trust that you're going to come show up for your hearing. Wink, wink. What do they expect to happen? Of course, there are going to be people right. who are bringing their children across the border. Of course, there are going to be people who are letting their children in the care of someone else to take them they're across the border. Them. You're mm -hmm. broadcasting that you're going to accept them. So one might think, Amy, that if they truly cared about these kids, they would tell everyone, they would tell all of mm -hmm. these countries, keep your kids at home. It is dangerous for them. Right. Yeah. Yes. But uh, an issue is not that we have these facilities to hold them. The issue is that there are too many that are coming across that we can't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. At least what Trump was doing was limiting the amount of people that were coming over here. Yes, we still had to receive them. I love when you're on the show because you shed so much light on what these yes. centers were actually set up to do. You never hear about it yeah. on the media. Yeah, it's not to be mean. No, it's, no. it's, it's to protect actually, the children. It's actually, it's actually a good to protect thing. <laughs> the best way to protect them. It, it's right. incredible. Because like you've told us before in the past, they're separating them mm -hmm. from who brought them over here. They're trying to figure out, like, where do you go? Who brought you here? What's going on? Are How they can actually we, your parents? Can we actually yeah. keep you safe here? Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, like, if if we find out there's something going on, we, we can send you back, you know, if it's not a safe situation. So really, unfortunately, what Trump did was, was good. It just got such a bad rap because people didn't take the time to report on it. I know I could hardly find factual information on it. I had to get all my facts when you came on the show and really laid out what these centers were yeah. doing and how they actually were there to set up to protect the children. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we've got a huge mess at our border and it's um, it's getting bad yeah. down there. For a second, sure. let's say let's say you're a Border Patrol agent, CBP, OK, you're fighting for this country. Your number one job is to keep the country safe. That's your number one job. Now a child comes across the border. That CBP agent has to, in a matter of 30 minutes, analyze the following. Is there a health care concern? Is he hungry? Is he clothed right? Is that the parent? Do they speak my language? Can they communicate? All of a sudden, oh, what about illegal food coming across the border? You do know that you cannot bring a mango into the United States mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without it being stopped at the border yep. and being checked mm -hmm. and radiated at times. But you can bring a child in. Right. And how do they even what have What in the world are we talking about? Well, and it's, we're also talking about being in the middle of a, a pandemic that I don't, we don't even have enough testing facilities to test our own citizens mm -hmm. and make sure that everyone here is safe and not spreading disease. How do we even have the capacity to truly test every single one of these people that are coming across the border? Well, to they're see testing what they're, them and they're coming out positive and they're releasing still them to releasing our country. Them. It's catch so, and release. Yeah, I mean, even, I mean this please. is what I'm saying. I mean, even now, and <laughs> this is just truth, when they identify a child as this child is now with a trafficker, right? They're releasing them into the country. Not just the child, the trafficker gets a court date 90 days out. You got to show up to a parole officer. Good luck. That's Charlie. typically what criminals do, I right? Mean, they just show up. And what are we talking about here? I don't happen. know how this party has gotten away with claiming that they are the ones that care about people that are loving that are you know just care about human rights when this is happening down at our border it's it's just so, so sad it's all for the vote mm -hmm. well it's they there they have very effective messaging it's, it's very cunning the, yeah mm -hmm. very, it is very effective but, but is it so way. is it so unique though because in new york city they cut a trafficker and a child and they fingerprint them and that guy walks the same day. No bail. And he gets a 90 day 
parole date to show up. So they're doing it on the border, but they're doing it in our mm -hmm. cities. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Uh, all right. We've got more to come, including why Biden's education department decides that uh, racially segregated groups, uh, definitely not discriminatory. I mean, really good, really good for uh, racial interaction, definitely. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Gabby Insurance. Uh, I'm sure you are looking for uh, all the ways that you can potentially save money. We had a pandemic. There were people who were forced out of business. Now is the time that everyone is counting their pennies. So uh, if you are looking to, uh, you know, maybe keep an extra $961 a year in your pocket, yeah, that was exact, but let me tell you why. Uh, that is how much Gabby customers save per year on average on car and home insurance. So what Gabby does is uh, Gabby takes all of the, all of the major insurance carriers um, and they they give you an apples to apples comparison of your current coverage with all of these 40, with 40, there's 40 of them. Did you even know that 40 existed? I didn't until I started using Gabby. They give you all of the comparison for all of the top insurance providers. So they will let you know, A, you may find a, a, a policy that is much cheaper than what you're paying now. But B, this is the most important thing that they do. They're not in it to like sell you something. If you have the best policy already and you are already saving the largest amount of money, they tell you. They just say, congratulations, you actually have the lowest rate already. Um, and that is how they're helping you. So uh, again, they're not in it to uh, make sure to sell you a policy. They truly are just trying to give you apples to apples. Make sure that you are getting the uh, cheapest and most cost effective policy out there. You can relax using Gabby knowing you have the best rate out there. They're not going to sell your information either, by the way. So you're not going to get any annoying spam from them. Check out how much Gabby can save you. It's totally free to check. There's no obligation. You can go to Gabby.com slash Y. That is G-A-B-I dot com slash Y. Gabby.com slash Y. Uh, now, in the final days of the Trump administration, uh, the Department of Education had determined that racial affinity groups were discriminatory because they are... <laughs> Obviously, they are treating students and staff differently based on their race. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of people fought against, uh, including Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, we want to judge people on the content of their character, not the color of their skin. So the Trump administration had uh, determined that these were discriminatory. Well, you're in luck because uh, President Biden actually suspended this decision. The, the education department under President Biden has decided that uh, this is totally OK. Racial affinity groups uh, will be fine to be used in K through 12 and also higher inst higher education institutions uh, across the country because they can give this is this. I'm reading this. This is not me. I'm reading this. They can give black people a, quote, safe space end quote, to discuss their experiences with racism while providing a separate space for white people to learn about their white privilege. So those of you out there who uh, may be white, maybe you've had a hard time in life, don't worry. You actually have had white privilege this whole time. You didn't even know it. Can you believe that? I'm, I'm sitting. Actually, you're an African American. I am so African. I'm I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be talking to you. Legitimately <laughs> African American, right? Because um, it's not about skin pigment. Right. And again, I, I, I'm a broken record in this. Your audience is going to say, "Tell you, I could say something else." I'm not gonna. <laughs> Look at who's talking race. Always, mm -hmm. always. They cannot function mm -hmm. without racial tension. And so, I'm not surprised they reverse. Hear this. This is that party is reversing a decision to judge people on character. No, 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 no. We got to compartmentalize and segregate. That's what we got to do here. We got to segregate them, put them in box. One may think that they actually want to capitalize off of the racial division right. that they are creating. Of course. Hmm. Of course. Follow the money. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, no, it, it's just so sad. Trump was trying to help us take a step forward. Now we are going backwards. And as progressive as we think we are in this society, we are continuing to intentionally, this party is intentionally taking steps to, to get us backwards. And it is all an attempt to keep them in power. Like you said, they know that when everybody is divided and we're not a united front, we are not a united people, well, guess what? Someone has to be their savior. If mm -hmm. you constantly feel like you are the victim, if you constantly feel like everything is stacked against you, well, 
don't worry, the government will come in and be your savior and they will help you. And all the while they're the ones that are keeping this mentality to where we can never overcome that. And I really want to raise my children in a world where it doesn't, they don't see skin color. Mm -hmm. Remember when it used to be okay to say we can be colorblind? And now it feels like we're reverting back to that. And I don't want to teach my children to, to look at that and to make decisions based off of people's color. I want them to be in a world where they realize that we are equal, that we are all Americans here, you know, when you're in this country and, and you're, you're here legally and you're an American citizen, like we, and we all have the opportunity to work hard, to succeed, to come out of our circumstances. That's what I want to, to train my children. And it just seems like that message is getting completely drowned out. And so many people will say, how do, you, how do you lift someone out of poverty? And we always go back to his education. It's actually the ability to think freely. Mm. It's the ability to dream. It's the ability to, to say, what if, the what if, what if it's me? What if I'm LeBron James? What if mm -hmm. I am yeah. Saquon Barkley? What if I'm, what if I'm, right? And they suppress that by compartmentalizing. You suppress that. You put limits on, on a child's and a, and a community's mind. You limit them. Mm -hmm. You put boxes around them to control 100%. And that's how you keep society, you hold society back. Because a true free people, right, are, would do things differently than this. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, I've got whiplash because just, what is it, um, nine weeks ago, 10 weeks ago, they're the ones that were saying, how much racism there is in this country and what a racially charged nation we're And now you bring a policy in that segregates people? Yeah. Come on. Well, I mean, it shouldn't be any surprise for the uh, Obama administration 2.0, because as we saw President Obama under his leadership was when we saw the country really segregate uh, and have this racial divide that he, of course, was provoking. And now this is basically the Obama admin 2.0. So it should not be a, a shock to any of us. Now, speaking of uh, racially segregated groups, uh, all of this talk about, you know, black versus white, all of these things. Don Lemon, let me let me let me show you a little flashback from Don Lemon, uh, who back in 2013 actually spoke with Bill O'Reilly of all people uh, about problems in the black community, what the black community can do to fix its problems. And he sounded, I mean, I don't know, a little bit like he had white privilege, uh, if we're judging by the criteria that is put upon us today. Listen to Don Lemon in 2013. So listen to this. The reason there is so much violence and chaos in the black precincts is the disintegration of the African-American family. He's got a point. In fact, he's got more than a point. Bill? Raised without much structure, young black men often reject education and gravitate towards the street culture, drugs, hustling, gangs. Nobody forces them to do that. Again, it is a personal decision. He is right about that too. But in my estimation, he doesn't go far enough. Because black people, if you really want to fix the problem, here's just five things that you should think about doing. Here's number five. And if, if, if this doesn't apply to you, if you're not doing this, then it doesn't apply to you. I'm not talking about you. Here's number five. Pull up your pants. Sagging pants, whether it's Justin Bieber or no name Derek around the way, walking around with your ass and your underwear showing is not okay. In fact, it comes from prison when they take away belts from the prisoner so that they can't make a weapon. Boy, what a difference uh, a little under a decade makes. I couldn't imagine Don Lemon uttering any of those words today, uh, although it, these are all still true ideas. And Yaku, I know that you uh, speak a lot about um, fathers yep. uh, and fatherless communities yep. and what transpires when we have fatherless communities. These things were not controversial back then. Apparently now they are. They were common sense. And so even the left at that point fall in line with common sense, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, indoctrinated much, Don? I mean, how far has he shifted? How far has he abandoned what he once believed was right, which was just still the normal models. When you break the nuclear family, particularly when you remove a father. Now, mothers, you are maternally connected. We all came out of a, a womb. That's it, okay? But when you remove a father, it's catastrophic for any nation around the world. You can go anywhere around the world, right? 
you break it. When you do it by design, mm -hmm. when you encourage it, and then when you fund it, mm -hmm. follow the money, mm -hmm. when you fund removing the black father, father from a household, okay, you do it with, with a reason. You know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know that you're taking Oak Cliff, Oak Lawn, Dallas, Texas, and you're putting your thumb on it. You know that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know you're getting a voter block that's going to go on the doll, on the government system, on the pay stops, uh, on, on the uh, food stamp system. And, and it's this weird psychology that happens to a kid when, raised without a father. Okay? When you don't have a father in the house, you are desperate. You're looking for a savior. It's what they want. You said it mm -hmm. earlier. We will save you. Here's the golden ticket. Create the problem and present the solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amy, I know several people uh, that I think probably we all know, we all share in common, uh, black men, conservative black men who would say the exact same thing that Don Lemon would say and they would get called an Uncle Tom. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that, that's the world that we're living. In. It's not funny at all. It's actually extremely sad mm -hmm. because Don Lemon was was right. I didn't know if those it's words would ever weird. come out of my right. mouth. Weird. Yes. It's weird. But he was right, and I would love to see him do a playback on that, see where he stands on it now, see if he backtracks at all or if he really did believe in what he was saying at that point. Because now it seems like, I think yeah. he did then. He doesn't now. Yeah. It's all for the ratings and the clicks uh, mm -hmm. and, the, and the Trump derangement syndrome Trump now. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was like, well, look at what's happened between there. It all started with Trump derangement syndrome right. and just, you know, escalated from there, unfortunately. But, yeah, I mean, the, this doesn't shock any of us at this table that any conservative black American is going to, you know, they're not going to listen to them. Yeah. I mean, have you listened to Ben Carson right. lately? Mm -hmm. There is so much wisdom coming out of that man. Yeah. And last time I checked, his skin pigment was dark. <laughs> Which means he won't be listened to by the mainstream media, of course. Of course. All right, back in a minute. Girly man Brian Stelter, uh, also known as Mr. Potato Head to a lot of you out there. He Now, I want to make something clear. He did not, unfortunately, on his program called Reliable Sources, did not have any time to address any of the uh, Andrew Cuomo scandals going on, uh, whether it be the, you know, oh, I don't know, covering up a bunch of deaths in nursing homes and disabled homes or all of the accusations lodged against the governor. But he did. However, I will have you know, with estrogen running through his veins, he did have a chance to make sure that his audience understands the ups and downs of the TV personalities working from home and just, you know, let's humanize. Let's humanize these people. It's just so hard for them just sitting at home and working. Watch. If it is successful, guys. Very cool. We love it, Will. Next time he wore pants. But hey, I can relate. Uh, this was oh. me live on CNN with just two minutes notice talking with Wolf Blitzer about Trump's Twitter account being banned. No, no, mm -mm. I'm going to call BS on that one, Brian. That I, I, I don't believe that you walk around the house with no pants on because I don't believe anyone else in that house would allow that. I don't. I don't believe it one bit. You took the pants off for the picture, Brian. Yes. You took the pants off for the picture, and nobody wants to see this, Brian. Okay? Nobody wants to see this from you. Also, a two-minute warning. Is it a clip-on tie? Because how long does it take to right. tie a the tie? Right. The tie, the jacket, exactly. the shirt, exactly. yeah. the no, ring light. <laughs> okay. The ring light. Mr. Potato Head with no pants. My eyes are burning. I'm They're on uh, fire. No one wants to see that, Brian. But uh, again, we really have so many issues going on in this country. This is what we talk about. This yeah. is what he is dedicating on his program time to is making sure that we humanize the news. We want to humanize Brian Stelter, Chris Cuomo, Don Lemon, all of these people who dedicated basically the last four or five years of their lives oh. dehumanizing you actually out there, you. If you're watching this program right now, they were dehumanizing you. They have spent all of this time talking about how you are in a cult. They have to deprogram you. Uh, it, but don't worry, it's not your fault. It's President Trump's fault. Now, all of a sudden, they want to make sure that we know that uh, they're humans too, guys, okay? They're just like you. They don't wear pants around the house. 
vomit. I wear pants vomit. around the house. I know. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know what? I would have. I would have bought it if it was like pajama pants. Right. 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 But like, there's no. I could no. tell. Could you, no, you guys don't do that, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> so walk around the house with no pants on because you're not on okay. TV. Right. Okay. I mean, you traumatize people. I know, right? I'm traumatized by seeing that. No, I'm not. He's not that important. But but here's but here's the deal. We know you're a human. I just know you're a foolish one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying you're not human. I'm just saying what's coming out of your mouth tells me that you're desperate enough to sell your soul to the highest bidder and have no rudder, have no spine, can't defend the country that fed you, that protects you, can't stand beyond the troops that, that, that go out there at night and lose family members and limbs. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're human. I just know there's different kinds. Yeah. And I mean, I got news for you, Brian. You're not, you are not the hero in this story. <laughs> you are not the hero. As much as you try to paint yourself to be a hero, uh, as you know, Jim Acosta and all of these other blowhards do in the mainstream media, mm -hmm. I, I can't help but think the average American looks at that and goes, yeah, guys, you're not, you're not the story. You're not the story. As much as you try to make yourselves the story, you're not. Right. I don't care how little pants you have on. It doesn't make up for how much I don't care about the substance of what it is that you're talking about. Yeah. Your character is not there. Mm -hmm. Everything I feel that comes out of their mouth is spewing lies. So I don't care how human you are, how lack of, of little pants you're wearing. You know, I, I, that doesn't, I don't watch them anyways, you know, unless I have to, but. But yeah. help me, how does not wearing pants make you human? <laughs> oh, because the rest of us, you know, what, in our Zoom meetings. Of Eden? What, is, what are we, how is that even, I'm sitting here going, how's that even an indicator? Oh, see, I, let me show you, I'm human. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like you. Let me relate to average American who walks around with no pants on. You know, you can show me you're human. I mean, get back in touch with reality. Care about people. Right. Mm -hmm. Care about the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do your job. Like, do your actual journalistic job. For starters, mm -hmm. maybe. Wow. Yep. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he can handle that. I don't think early man Brian Stelter can handle that. All right, we got to take a break. Back in a minute. What's journalism? <laughs> if you are watching or listening to this program right now, uh, if you have not yet gone to, if you're listening, you're probably listening wherever you get your, uh, your favorite podcast. But have you subscribed, rated, and reviewed the News and Why It Matters wherever you get your favorite podcast? Because if you have not, you're dead to me. I'm just kidding. Well, kind of. You're kind of dead to me, okay? Because you need to go do that. Because if you do that, it will actually help more people be able to find this program so they, too, can, one, get the News and Why It Matters, two, also make fun of Brian Stelter. And we don't want anyone to miss out on making fun of Brian Stelter. So please, do your, do your duty uh, and make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. As a bonus, you may see your review or hear your review read live on air. Today we have one from uh, Roger, who gave us five stars. News that matters, says Sarah gives the real news and tells us why it matters. All her guests are great. I give it five stars every day. By the way, I'm writing this review, hoping she will say my name on air. Wouldn't that be cool? It works. Well, is that cool, Roger G, or what? <laughs> Uh, thank you for your review. Um, but uh, really, it's the pleasure is all ours. We uh, we feel so grateful to be able to yeah. sit here at this table and uh, discuss the news and have you guys actually care about our opinion. Absolutely. So thank you for that review, Roger G. Hope that made your day. And uh, if you have not yet, make sure you go get that review in. Uh, but uh, again, it's only five stars. I actually think it's a bug. You can't even click less than that, so don't even try. Five stars when five really stars. what you mean is like a thousand. All right. Yep. Five stars. The G-Man, Roger G. <laughs>